good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This webinar series, The Ecosystem of Academic Publishing, is brought to you by Crossref and IES Research. IES Research is a team that provides research publication with an engaging voice through the adaptation of the IES storyboard of Big Why, Why, and What. We design visuals and animations to support your research findings, maximize the understanding of the discoveries, and share your story globally to improve research visibility and increase scholarly engagement. My name is Iris Xu, and I'm your host for the day. With us today is Rachel Lamy, Interim Community Director from Crossref, and the topic of her sharing today will be on how to manage your metadata with Crossref. The sharing will be approximately 20 minutes, and we will have the remaining time for Q&A. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the session by simply using the Q&A toolbar located at the button center of the Zoom meeting interface. So without further ado, let me move the ground to Rachel to begin the session. Rachel, hand it to you. Great, thanks Iris. Um, and thank you everyone um, for joining us today. Um, so I'm gonna talk about how to manage your metadata with Crossref. So that will include things like the importance of um, the completeness and accuracy of the information that you register with us, how to make corrections and additions to your, to your metadata, um, a couple of methods as to how you can do this, how you can use participation reports to find out what metadata you're sending Crossref and how you can improve that. And a really important piece is then how you can get help with that um, if you get stuck or if you're not sure if you've done things correctly and how we can, how we can help you with that. Um, Sarah so said, um, my name is Rachel Lamy um, and I work in community outreach at Crossref. Um, I previously worked at a publisher before joining Crossref in 2012. When I started at Crossref, I worked in product management, um, working on our similarity check service, among others. And then I moved over to the community outreach type team in 2016. Um, my colleague um, Vanessa Fairhurst, um, who's our community outreach manager, is also on the webinar today. Um, you might have heard her present yesterday if you joined us then. Um, Vanessa is going to um, be on board to help with the, um, with the Q&A that comes in over the course of the, the webinar. So you might hear from her via the, via the chat as well. Um, to talk about to start with, um, to, to mention our mission at Crossref, um, it's trying to make research outputs easy to find, cite, link, assess and reuse. And keeping your metadata up to date is a really good way to be able to, to help with that and ensure that happens. Um, we're not for profit and we're a membership organisation um, trying to make scholarly communications better. And to give you a bit of an idea of scale, we have 40 staff who are based around the world, um, USA, UK, Ireland, France, Germany, and we work with over 16,000 member organisations, a lot of whom are publishers, but also organisations like institutions, libraries and funders who want to register content with us. We work with a board of 16 members who are a cross-section of, um, of international publishers and we have a metadata store of over 116 million scholarly content items, a lot of which is journal articles but is, is becoming sort of a mix of more diverse content types with things like preprints and peer reviews recently sort of joining the, the types that we, that we collect. Vanessa's webinar yesterday talked about the fact that a DOI is just is really just the start. Um, the DOIs and metadata that organisations register with us um, underpin a wide array of services that we offer and that other organisations offer to help ensure that um, um, that anyone can find and link between related research. 
and we preserve this metadata that we receive um, in the um, over time and, and for um, for the long term, and we make it available via open APIs and and search. And this is um, the the way, the fact that we make our metadata available for different tools and services to be able to use it is is one of the underpinning reasons why the metadata that um, that organisations register with us is so important, and it's so um, is so important. It's not just about getting a persistent identifier for your work. You know, put in some information and get a DOI. It's about where your metadata goes after you register it with Crossref and how many organisations use that metadata to find the content that you publish and make it available to anyone who's interested. So because Crossref's metadata is standardised and machine readable, that makes it very useful to many organisations that make your content more discoverable. Um, so the slide that I have on screen shows some examples. So library discovery services use Crossref metadata to help their researchers accurately find um, the information that they're interested in. Abstracting and indexing services use Crossref metadata, again, because a DOI and the metadata helps uniquely identify a piece of content. So they can be sure that A, they're, they're indexing accurately, and B, they're not you know, double counting um, items um, because they can disambiguate between them using the DOI. As such, it can be used for things like um, to underpin metrics and analytics services, um, and also just things that can, can be a bit of a pain, um, you know, um, tools that help you manage um, citations whenever you're registering um, an article um, or in manuscript tracking systems um, to, to help um, match and link between different citations. Um, so all of this is happening kind of automatically after you register your DOIs and metadata with Crossref. So it's kind of a time saver for publishers as well, because you don't need to spend your time sending information to lots of different sources, because that can happen centrally through Crossref. So it's important that the metadata that, um, that, um, you, pro that you provide when you're registering um, content with us is accurate. It, what I mean by that is that it needs to be the right information. So making sure the author names are entered and spelled correctly, that the URLs that you provide for your DOIs link to your articles or your books, um, because bad, bad URLs or those that don't work do pretty horrible things in our ecosystem. And I would say that we get a lot of queries from authors who maybe notice, say, that DOIs aren't resolving, that there are issues or inaccuracies in the metadata, um, and they often contact our support team because it it's causes problems for them. And we won't update the metadata on behalf of publishers um, because the publisher is the authoritative source of that information. Um, so they need to update the information with Crossref. We, we wouldn't do that directly for an author and change information related to a publication on their say-so. We'd ask for the information to be complete. So that is collecting contributor information on all authors, um, on things like their ORCID IDs, as well as what shape their contributions took maybe, and also things like what organisation they're associated with. And the metadata needs to be up to date. So lots of metadata stand still. Things like the title of a paper probably won't change over time, but some of it will. So URLs change. So that's why we're here. If the content moves to be published on a new website, licences evolve, and newer initiatives like ORCID IDs can be added to an existing metadata set. So current and complete metadata are really things that we, we need to focus on at Crossref as well. And we want to make it easy for you to update your metadata, keep track of updates, and we need to collect or refine new metadata as, it's, as we evolve. 
So to show a quick example, I found this paper through, our, um, through one of our search interfaces. But when this paper was initially submitted to Crossref, no co-authors were listed in the metadata that was registered. This made it really difficult for the co-author because she was, she was looking at this, she was looking at the paper in different indexing services. And because she wasn't listed, she wasn't able to get credit for the work that she put in and for the publication. So she contacted the publisher and they were able to update the information to, to solve the problem and add the co-authors. But you can see because of these downstream effects, it's really important that the information is accurate. So there are a variety of methods to, to register your content with Crossref. And what we find as, um, as we've started to deal with um, with more publishers um, around the world and specifically smaller publishers who are publishing you know a, a journal as, as one of the very many things that they do in their jobs is that we need to find um, to provide simple methods to do this. A growing number of our members use open journal systems um, which is an open platform provided by the public knowledge project um, and Organisations that host their journals on OJS, um, they can benefit from using um, a Crossref plugin, which I've linked to on the slides. Um, and this helps them automatically basically hit a button to register DOIs with, um, with Crossref without having, to, um, without having to have a separate workflow in order to do that. We've, we have a very simple web deposit form where you can just copy and paste in vital information about the paper, add the DOI and the, the URL that it should link to and register that with us. So that's a very simple interface. We also have our metadata manager tool, which is still in beta, but aims to be an improvement on the web deposit form. Um, and you can log in and maintain and update and register your metadata using that tool. Obviously, a lot of organisations are also comfortable just using XML directly. And that's the format that, um, that, we, that we work in at Crossref. So if you're comfortable compiling XML files, then you can, you can upload those either programmatically or directly via doi.crossref.org, which is our, our admin tool. Once you have your metadata or your DOIs registered with Crossref in the first place, as I said, the, the really um, important thing is that you update or you correct that information over time if it changes. If you're using the OJS plugin, you can update the record and then redeposit it, um, redeposit the metadata with Crossref. Using the web deposit form, you can go in and re-enter the, the, the information, correcting it as you go, and then hit submit. And we will overwrite any existing metadata related to that DOI with the new or corrected information that you've provided. So again, that's quite a manual way to do it, but, um, but it is very simple. My colleague Shane recently wrote a blog about how you can edit the metadata record in our metadata manager tool. Um, metadata manager will bring up the existing metadata that you've provided related to a DOI. Um, and you can just overwrite that, make changes and resubmit it. If you use XML, um, you can correct the, the XML directly in those files and upload that back into our systems and we'll overwrite the old record with the new information. We also had some questions yesterday about updating the URLs. So say nothing has changed about the papers you publish, bar the fact that they're being listed on a new web, they're, they're being hosted on a new website, you can send a CSV file to our support team, which contains your DOIs, 
and the new links that those um, that those DOI should point to, and we'll make that update um, that update for you. The really important thing that I wanted to, to point out is that there, there's never a fee to update metadata related to existing DOIs. So if you want to make these updates, corrections, update your URLs, we need to do that to, to maintain the, the records that we have. And we don't, we don't charge for that because we, we want to provide means for, we, we don't want to discourage best practice. In our education curriculum, um, and I've provided the link there, it talks about all of the different ways that, um, that our members need to, to steward or maintain their metadata. So I've talked about some of these things um, already. Um, it includes changing things like the ownership of, of DOIs. And an important question that came up um, in the webinar yesterday is that some people were asking about how they how they could delete DOIs, maybe they've registered something in error or they've used the, um, they've entered the suffix incorrectly. So it's important to say that it's not possible just to delete a DOI. These are persistent identifiers connected with metadata that relates to them. So they need to be available over time or the metadata that relates to them. If you do make a bad mistake when registering a DOI, you can contact our support team and I'll give you their information later and give us some details about your situation that we can help. We can point a deleted DOI to a specific page um, that we maintain, or we can alias or point one DOI to another DOI record. Um, but we don't just, um, we, we can't clear them out of, their, of our system as if they never existed, um, because that then obscures the, the record of what's happened to um, a, particular, a particular paper. Um, because as, you've, as I've said, lots of other systems use the information. One thing worth mentioning um, in relation to those, um, in relation to the, the organizations that use Crossref meta, metadata is that sometimes people think that all Crossref members have a defined set of information, that it's complete and it's fully comprehensive, but that isn't exactly the case. As I've mentioned, things like missing authors, incorrect URLs, all of those can lead to, um, to metadata looking a bit more like this, which just makes it more difficult for people to find and use the content. So we, we built um, a tool called Participation Reports, and you can find those, they're openly available at the, the URL that I've listed on screen. And you can search for, in the search tool, you can put in the name of any Crossref member and see what metadata they're registering with Crossref. You can keep track of the progress of their metadata if it changes over time. And it, you're able to see how that measures up to other members. Because we find that Crossref members weren't always aware of what metadata they were sending us. So they couldn't see what was missing and fix the gaps. So we needed to make that available in a user-friendly way. So to show a quick example, um, this is an example of a member's re participation report, um, the Vietnam Association of Obstetrics and Gynecology. They're not registering any references yet, but when they do, those will be set to open. 9% of their content has ORCID IDs associated with it. 100% has text mining, license and similarity check URLs, which is great. And they've also got abstracts, metadata deposited for 93% of their, their records. They could see that they could improve these records by adding references, funder registry ideas, uh, information who, who's funded the research. But by viewing this, the association can easily identify the metadata gaps and what they can do to improve. Each item has a more information button 
and when clicked that will display an explanation of each indicator with links to more information including why the metadata is important and how it could be improved. You can view the report by different content types if you register more than journal articles by selecting from a drop down list or you can look at the metadata report for a specific title by typing the search into the search, typing that into the search box, which provides a drop down list of the titles to search from. And you can also search by current content or content provided just as back files or overall time. Because we find that not all fields will be populated for all titles, of course. So content published in 1960 isn't going to have an ORCID associated with the authors, for example. Some publications might not have abstracts or be funded. So back issue content might not have as, as rich information as current content can have. So we definitely advise taking a look at your participation report um, and using that to kind of advise you know on on how you can you can supplement the information that you register with Crossref. Um, because long story short, the, the better metadata you provide makes makes the content more useful um, for anyone who's interested in it. And I think the really kind of important thing to get um, to get across is that you're not on your own with this. Um, we have um, we have a reworked education curriculum that talks you through the various steps that you need to do. But we've also got um, a hardworking support team who you can contact at support at crossref.org who are able to help if you get stuck, if you're not sure, if you want to check that things have worked. Um, we've also got a community forum where you can post questions to be answered by the community and a series of Ask Me Anythings um, or AMAs where our support team will be present on a webinar and you can join them to ask maybe specific questions about your publications or to get some more information on, on what you're trying to do. So we started running those a couple of months ago and they've been really popular because as I'm sure you find, um, you know, a 20 minute webinar is, is never enough to, to cover all of the things that we'd like to. So with that in mind, I wanted to make sure that we've, um, that we've got some time today for, for some Q&A. Um, said you can get in touch, feedback at crossref.org. And I've also provided the link for the, the, the next webinar in this, um, this series, um, which, is, which is coming early next week. Um, but just to say, I said um, again, thank you for, um, for joining us today. I hope that was a useful taster and yeah, I'll be, be pleased to take, to take your questions. Um, right, so shall we proceed to the Q&A session now? Um, so let's uh, actually thank you for all this uh, uh, thank you, Rachel, for all the very detailed sharing. And I think we have already a lot of questions uh, been in the uh, Q&A session uh, and the Q&A toolbar, and some of them are already answered. But there are a few questions that uh, we would like you to sh maybe share with everyone because that might be some things that people are care about. So one of the question is that um, uh, one participant asks, I'm interested to retrieve all the records attributed to our journals to ensure they're all correct. So what is the best way to do it? So I think that there are, there are there are a couple there are a couple of ways to do that um, so one way is to um to log into the um the admin tool at doi.crossref.org and that will keep a full record of all of the um of all of the, the content that you've registered with us. Um, 
participation reports is a good way to see that. But equally, if you just want, say, a list of the DOIs that you've registered with Crossref, um, then I would suggest if you get in touch with our with our support team and let them know the kind of the specific information that you need. So if it's just a list of the DOIs and the URLs associated with them, a full list of the DOIs, and they'll be able to um, to to run like to run a report and provide an Excel file um, with that information. Right. Thank you, Rachel. And another question is, uh, you mentioned about contributions. So the question is, are you getting a lot of credit contribution into uh, the credit contribution information into Crossref? And is that something we can interrogate via Crossref API or other tools? Um, so that's a, that's a good question. So at the moment, we at Crossref, we don't support the collection of the, the credit metadata. So as you said, metadata um, related to the author's specific, the, the listed author's specific contributions to the paper. The next time that we update our metadata schema, which will be in the next couple of months, we will start to support the collection of credit metadata that relates to contributors, um, that, that relates to the authors of the paper. And I know that some publishers are, are ready and keen to send us that already because they're, because they're collecting it now. Once pub once we're ready to collect that, we will make an announcement about it later this year. And when we collect that from, from publishers, we will make that openly available via our API so that it's available for, for interrogation. Okay, sounds good, like a progress. So uh, another question is that, how do we assess the participation reports for a member? So, Looking at um, the, the participation report, ideally, ideally what you'd want, depending on um, things like your subject area, for example, um, you basically you sort of want these, um, these percentages to look as, as healthy as, as what I would say, like as healthy as possible. Um, so hopefully you know having registering references with crossref having orchid ids associated with um with as many papers as um as possible funding information as i said i know that that is um prevalent in in some subject areas less so in others um if you're participating in crossmark um and i think my like my personal opinion is that um, if you're publishing content that's um, that's open access, making sure that um, that as many of your your published um, published articles have license information associated with them as possible is that's that's kind of a real winner. In that, if you're publishing content that's open access, letting people know that in a machine readable way is is a really is a really useful way of letting anyone know how the content can be used. Um, with the participation reports, um, there are little um, links to tool tips, for example, um, that let you know what the different fields mean, and they create links. They have links to why that information is important where you, and where you can learn more. So it's good to be able to go in and sort of, I would say, kind of dig around in your participation reports and look at those links to find out why certain fields might be important so that you can consider if that's something that, that, you'd, like to, that you'd like to take the time to um, to add or to, to improve for your publications.
Um, Rachel? Yep. There are a couple of questions about um, resolution reports. Um, a couple of people have said they've received them, but they don't quite understand them or they'd like to know them in a little bit more detail. Um, and someone has asked, um, do we conduct regular checks of broken DOI links or report a list of DOIs that do not resolve properly? Um, so I don't know if you can give a very quick um, summary of what we mean by resolution reports. Sure. What questions about it? No, of course. Um, and it's, it's a good question. So if you're a Crossref member, we send you a, um, we send a monthly, what we call a resolution report to a named contact associated with your account. Um, so it's, it's again, it's a kind of thing, it's always worth kind of keeping your information up to date with us so that you can keep receiving these reports. The resolution report basically shows how many clicks we are seeing on your DOIs over, um, over a set period of time. So how many people are actively clicking on, um, on your DOIs to be taken to the work. So that could be from somebody else's reference list. It could be from a third party tool or service like an indexing database. So it's kind of seeing how many, how much traffic Crossref is directing via the DOI to your, to your publications. In that, in the resolution reports, we'll show the kind of the, the top, I think the top 10 DOIs um, that people can, that people have been clicking on over a time period, which can be really useful information because it shows kind of what, which papers um, that you've published seem to be getting the most attention. The really important thing um, to kind of focus on in the resolution reports is that we will, we, it, they, contain a, a failure rate in those. So how many people have clicked on one of your DOIs and they haven't been taken to that content? And if your failure rate looks pretty high, that's something that, um, that's something that it's good to sort out. Um, so it might be that your content has moved to a new website and you haven't updated the DOIs, so they're still pointing to where the article sat before and they're getting an error message. Um, the other thing that can cause that is that sometimes um, when someone adds a DOI to a PDF or the landing page of an article, maybe they do that incorrectly. Um, they don't put the correct DOI there or they add something like a full stop at the end of the DOI, which stops it, which stops it working. So if you're getting a high, um, failure rates and we'll provide, we, we also send a, a file that contains the DOIs that people are clicking on that cause those failures. It's always worth just taking a look through those and make sure that the DOIs that, um, the DOIs have been registered, that they're working and that you're displaying those correctly on your website. And that if you needed to update the information with them that you've done so via our support team. So it's just a kind of, it's, it's a kind of quick check to say, are your DOIs working? Which ones are we seeing the kind of the, the most clicks on? And um, do I need to do anything about those? So they are always, they are always worth um, reviewing to make sure that, um, that everything's working as you would expect it to. Um, and as I said, if, if, you, if, if you're participating if your resolution report looks weird, if the numbers have gone dramatically down or up since the last report, then again, our, our support team are, 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 are happy to help with those. Um, right, thank you, Rachel, again, for such uh, informative sharing, because due to the interest of time, uh, I'm afraid we cannot answer all the questions online, although we do have a lot of good questions and we will continue uh, answering them offline via email. So another inquiry that many will ask is whether we will re uh, provide the recordings and each certificate to the webinars. The answer is yes. And we will uh, send the record link to the recording and the e-certificate after all the sessions are completed and uh, you should be able to get the recording uh, after all the sessions. So 
and we will issue the e certificate for, for the those who joined all six sections of the webinar series. So please join do join us for the coming sections. Um, for the uh, next sections will be on finding your way with Crossref, and I think we will have the link posted on the uh, chat box so that everyone can register if you have not done so. Okay, so thank you very much, Rachel and Vanessa and all the participants for this wonderful sharing. And uh, if we haven't got answer your questions, you can also email to support at crossref.org and the Crossref team will be happy to get back to you there. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I hope to see you in the next webinars. Until then, have a good day and please stay safe. Thank you.